If you could split a handpan in half, could you use the two sides as a wok? Yeah. <laughs> They also make really great fire pits. Hi everybody! All of my handpans are in desperate need of a good clean because I haven't done it for a while so I thought I would do that in this video and at the same time answer a bunch of your questions. But before I dive in, if you have any questions that you want to have answered in a future video, please do let me know in the comments below. And if you want to help support what I do, I do have a Patreon, go check it out. There are loads of extra things that you can get from supporting me financially, including weekly handpan challenge videos and loads of other stuff. So I'm gonna first clean this lovely ACL. What I like to do is get a microfiber cloth, and just get off all of the dust and dirt first and then I will use this rubbing alcohol I have 70% here, higher is better to give it a really good clean, get any residual oil off, any dirt all that kind of thing somebody asks if it's better to play handpan on your lap or on a stand um, I think that's personal preference I think it depends on your playing um, style, it depends on the size of your handpan, some handpans are bigger, it depends on your body as well. A lot of people struggle to play with their handpan on their lap um, and so having a stand just gives you a little bit more freedom to really move around. I personally enjoy playing on my lap because I'm able and I really love feeling the vibrations as I play as well. Are you in the UK? Yes. There's something going on on this side of the handpan. I'm not, I'm not thrilled with it. <laughs> it could be dribble from my nephew. <laughs> you are wonderful. Oh, thank you. You are wonderful too. How to become a professional? <laughs> um, that's a really good question. Um, everybody's situation is different. Everybody achieves professional minimalism in different ways. Some people sell CDs, go on tour. Some people make videos in their bedroom. Um, some people teach. Um, to get to that point, it's all about, I guess, practicing like crazy, um, making it your life as much as possible, um, play every single day, take it seriously, compose, create, be, find whatever is your individual thing that you have to share with the world. What makes you different from all of the other handpan players? When I first started, I wasn't necessarily a, a good handpan player for a long time, but I was different because I was singing pop songs, I was using loop pedals, all that kind of thing, and that really helped me get the foot in the door. So find your creative thing, find your voice, whatever it is that makes you, you, and um, run with it, go wild with it, and dedicate time to it, and hang out, you know, reach out to, to people that are as in love with it as you, and um, yeah, get, get in, into the community and put yourself out there and then the opportunities will come. Um, so what I've just done is oiled my pan, by the way. I use Phoenix oil and I'm using a separate cloth for this so that I can go back to my uh, cleaner cloth when I move on to other hand pans or when I reuse my cloth so it's clean again. And I don't oil regu regularly. Never, never oil without cleaning first. Um, otherwise you'll just end up with loads of oil and it gets really sticky. Um, I made that mistake when I first started. And I only now, I used to I used to oil all my pans, but now I only oil this one and this one. Um, but my stainless pans, I don't actually bother oiling now. Um, just because I don't really like the feel of it, but it means that I just make sure to clean it super, super regularly. Um, because it definitely does need that. Where are you from? I'm from England, um, from Lincolnshire. I'm living here at the minute. Um, yep. What type of mic do you use for recording the handpan? Uh, the microphone that I use the most from recording, like for videos and stuff, is an Audio Technica AT2020. It's a condenser microphone. I plug that into an, an audio interface via an XLR cable. The audio interface is a Scarlett, as a Focusrite Scarlett 8 i 8 I think. And then that goes into my computer, into the software that I use to mix the sound. If I want it to be higher quality, when I'm recording albums or songs or what have you, I have a pair of microphones, I have two pencil microphones, and they are Octavas uh, MK something or other, I've forgotten the name of those. The 
AT2020 is a really, really good entry level microphone. I've had it since I was like 16 and I've recorded full albums with it, like every single instrument. Um, but they are discontinued now, but they, they do make alternative versions of those, so definitely check them out. They also do USB versions, so you can completely bypass the need for an interface, which makes it way less complicated and um, way cheaper. How long does it take to learn to play the handpan? Everybody is different, and that is perfect and okay, and it doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as you always enjoy the process. And if it ever doesn't feel fun, then do something different. I think it's really, really, really important that it's always, always fun. Um, so that should be the number one priority um, before before wanting to get better. What's the safest way to store the handpan? Not in its, its case. Don't store your handpans in their cases, because um, if there is moisture inside the bag, your handpan will rust. Sounds really scary. Um, everybody worries about rust. Don't worry too much. It's kind of fine, um, just don't do that. <laughs> Safest is just out of the way um, and somewhere open and accessible and that way you're more likely to play it too. <laughs> People are so kind in their comments. My handpan literally arrived today and I'm already addicted. I've been trying a lot of different positions with it on the floor, on the stand, on the couch, leaning back. My question is do you ever get back pain from playing for an extended period of time? Mm. Well, we talked a little bit about stands. Um, sometimes that is necessary if you're struggling with it on your lap. Check in with your posture all the time. As you play, notice if and where you have any tension. Even if the tension is at your feet, it's going to be affecting your hands and your back and your neck and everything else. If your tension is in your jaw, it still carries. So yeah, make sure that you're super relaxed when you're playing. Um, I recommend stretching and um, warming up before you play as well. If you feel pain, take a break. Don't power through it. <laughs> Most of these are just people saying thank you for the videos and saying nice things about me. <laughs> so thank you everybody, that's really kind. Um, what's your top three best bang for book exercises slash patterns in your handpan practices so far? Ooh, this one. Basically the same thing again, but with the thumb and middle finger. Up the scale. Wow. Playing grooves that you already know, but starting with your non-dominant hand. Number three... I don't know. I'll make a video on my top three. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save that for a full video. All right, so this pan is finished. I wiped it clean and then uh, cleaned it with alcohol and I do not intend to, uh, to oil it. Although one thing to note is I also have these other products that were provided to me by Meridian Hand Pans. I'm about to clean that one now. Um, this is actual stainless steel cleaner. Um, from Method, which I think is, I'm not sure if that's available outside of UK or Europe, I'm not sure. Um, and I also have, last time I bought a handpan from them, a few years ago, um, they gave me a Dunlop, like, guitar cleaning um, spray. I think it was a spray. So, I guess I'm gonna try using this. My neck gets sore when I play handpan. I think my setup is pretty optimal, but I'd like to hear more about good posture and relaxing your back. Yeah, like I said before, it's all about the posture. I find a lot of my tension is always in my shoulders and my neck, so I like to just check in, hunch my shoulders, roll them back, roll them down. I also have a tendency to lean forward. I've got quite a long neck, so I, I have a tendency, without realising, to crowd the drum a little bit. So I always kind of just like to check in, make sure that I'm not hunching like this, that my chest is open, and that I'm relaxed. Um, yeah, and then... Again, posture everywhere else. Is there tension somewhere else in your body, in your feet, or what have you? And that it all affects everything. Here he is! There's Mr. Wolfish. How do you go from sounding like a beginner to more advanced? And what are the details that set the two apart? For me, I think um, it is the difference between 
playing and playing well and expressing and playing with feeling and dynamic and control. Um, there is a difference between playing a groove and performing a groove. It's a difference between this, which is, you know, great. playing the same groove but I'm adding so much more to it and but I'm not doing it in a way that is too much and or the same repeating things over and over and over I'm always finding new new things to make it make it interesting all right I think we are clean I think I've cleaned all of the instruments that's good timing I finished I finished cleaning and I have a meeting in five minutes so <laughs> I'm gonna wrap up filming